I would give it to a couple of people mm -hmm. and the one thing that I ask for is what don't you like about it? Oh. How can it sound better? Yeah. More than do you like it? Because yes. half the time people say, oh, now it's... How is this house going to be clearer? Yeah, or how can, how can clearer, the rhythm can be, be better? Like, how can, yeah. Exactly. Mm. So I would take it to a slam poet, somebody like Flo. I would take oh, it to... Oh, so you take it to different kinds of poets? Yes. Oh, that's really cool. Yes. And then I would give it to a Philippa, I would give it to, a, yes. to an academic who would say, uh, perhaps you could think of this, you could do this, you could do that, right? Yeah. And I find that that enriches my writing of whatever. Good, because it's, it's richer. It's richer. It's textures, yes. there's layers. Yes. Yeah. And it makes you see things that perhaps you wouldn't even see. Right? Mm. And I always go to, I go to very young poets, I go to very old poets. Okay. And people sort of my age or my peers, people that I've shared stages with and so on and so on. And I'll ask them a, a very honest question and say, tell me what you don't like, tell me what you like, tell me what you think I can improve, and so on. And, so on. and some people would be like, I think this sent a simple thing like this sentence breaks in the wrong place. Beautiful. Right? Beautiful. Things like that. Because you won't pick that up almost. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, do you think that... Um, okay. My problem is that I think the older poets, and I think I've done this to younger poets, is that... The, the danger is that you, you almost want to prescribe what people should sound like, right? Or what a mm. poem should sound like. So I think that is the trap for me when I read other oh, yeah. young, young poets' uh, work. You're trying to impose your own voice? Not even impose, but it, it, it sort of happens. Like, I feel like this poem could be better this way. So, whilst that's the feedback I'm looking for, I feel like when I give that feedback, A lot of people don't want I'm that. like, am I being too prescriptive? Mm, and, and mm, so I also question myself of your understanding of your writing, right? Because sometimes the trap is that, is that you want this person to sound a particular way. Yeah. And I, I feel like a lot of older writers have done that. Have, have, you, have you found this to be true or am I... Am no, I no, completely, because I think I, I only like really returned to poetry when my son was born. Yeah. Um, so I was writing a lot of short fiction and in that time I kept being confronted with, with which I like to call the white male neutral voice. Right. It's right. just this like tone. It's like not academic. Yeah. But it's enlightened. It's mm -hmm. it, there's something like it's the neutral, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I kept like writing and, and finding myself bumping up against it. It was this very physical, like it was almost like the like the male writer's gaze being imposed on my work. And I think that was probably because I was being edited by a lot of white men. Right. Um, who were upper middle class and didn't understand the context of my characters. Right, right, right. And actually, funny enough, one of my experiences, I was writing about like a working class white woman who fallen pregnant, whatever, like similar to my situation. And I remember she was, it was spoken very much in how like a white Eastern Cape person speaks. So like lots of slang, cutting your sentences into like a little salad, you know. And I remember she said, oh, in the beginning it was like, um, I, I can't wait to see him dead, lifeless, that cold, like something like that. And I remember he, he changed into this very, the editor changed into this very um, sort of literary tone. And I couldn't tell him why it hurt so much. Yeah. I kept saying, you know, Nick, this is, this is it's, it's, I feel like I'm bleeding yeah. with what you did with that character. And I, I can't can't explain it and I didn't have the vocabulary yet to say that he was being prescriptive yeah yeah and that yeah. he didn't need to impose anything middle class on this woman she was speaking yeah without him right, 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 right. so I think there's a fine line you know between being edited and editing others and respecting the voice right, 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 right. and I think it's a very interesting place to be writing on the African continent and in South Africa especially when we've got so many cultures and languages and you don't you, I think you see it really the most in language and literature um, yeah, did I answer your question? No, you did. <laughs> but um, yes. I know you've, you've read and you've written, and I'm, I'm, I'm keen to, to hear your opinion on. And if, if this question is chauvinistic, you must tell me. Do you think black women are writing enough towards, and perhaps not in a particular voice because I mean I cannot prescribe that voice right but do you think they are writing enough uh, towards the social change of whatever nature whether it's stop killing Basadi or HIV or whatever it is right 
do you think that um, black women are in I don't want to say empowered because if you say empowered you are saying there's somebody that holds power for those women right mm. that allows them to sort of then do this thing that they want to do so but do you think that there is enough space enough room enough voices of women that are writing poetry towards this social change um, how successful and by success i don't mean money i mean um, does it matter this poetry of Asagi that, that that speaks about social change does it matter and should it matter and who should it matter to is it really just matter to women is it something that we should all read and why are we not reading it and so on and so on and there's this thing apparently but you know there's there's I do. Okay. I need a cigarette. You know, <laughs> you know that this offended me. There is women literature. What as is that? As a genre. Women's literary fiction, yeah. I'm like Because we're not considered human. Is it, is this it, is the is thing. It, is it literature written by women, for women? You know, that this chick lit thing. It it annoys me because Women are writers as much as men are writers. Mm. And I don't understand yeah, why there, so. there should be women literature. It's literature, full stop. Well, at this and I think yeah. it, with poetry, it's the same thing for me. Okay. Am, am I talking shit? Um, no, you've asked a lot of questions. And I don't know These where women? to start, but I pick up so, 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 okay. everywhere. Uh, basically, uh, your question here for um, the. Um, all of this woman literature, the poetry, is it speaking into the social, you know, change? Yeah. change? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, you look you look at Imbepo Press. Mm -hmm. That, I, I'm, I'm going to take you there. Look at Imbepo Press. They've got four books by women, all feminist. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you read the content. Mm -hmm. If they're addressing exactly what you're talking about. Queer issues. Queer uh, issues, yeah. you know. Abuse. And abuse yeah. and everything and, and all of that. And, and their lives. Yes. Mm. So I think for uh, Impeco Press has advanced into, and I don't know if whether it's deliberate for them to say that we are, I don't know whether they are only publishing women voices for now. Maybe later they, they will publish men and whatnot. But for Mujaji them. Books publishes strictly women, yes, right? Just yes. strictly Southern African women. I love that women. because for Mujaji Books to say that we are only <coughs> publishing women, it's, 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 a, it's a female space to say that, yeah. you know, sometimes our voice is not heard, you know, in this uh, mainstream Mm, voice. Yeah. So we need to have, if, if you're not heard as a woman, I, I read a quote by Uta Di Somazai, such a simple, simple quote. She said, open your mouth. Mm. This is so basic. Open your mouth. Speak. That is basically what you, you need to do. You don't need to do anything. Just open your mouth and and just speak. Yeah. So what in, uh, in Pepper Press is, is doing, it's, it, it's addressing what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And when, it, when you're talking about women literature, we must, you know, we don't want to get into the politics, the feminism and whatnot and whatnot, but sure. we must know that, you know what, our voices are not heard as much. We're not everywhere. You can talk, you can say something. But I have to, t I have to say it 10 times mm -hmm. first before I'm heard. Because and I was to talking heard, to someone to yesterday. Be generally, is to be heard by a man. No? Yes. Exactly. Yes. I was like, no, don't address me as a woman. I'm a human being. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'm, yes. I'm a human being. Yeah. Don't. No, that, you know, that, that's why I don't even subscribe to the definition of poetess. Yes. No, I mean, poetess is bullshit because it's just it's a secondary. It's like the yes. end mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. to the Adam. Mm -hmm. yeah. no. it's, it's, it's so poetry. Yeah. And we'll never be tired of writing about women. No, for me, the idea of women issues is completely mistaken. Mm -hmm. They are social issues. Social issues, mm -hmm. yeah. And, and we Human cannot, issues. Yes, we cannot say uh, women are this appendage mm -hmm. to this big maleness. Mm -hmm. and, then, yeah, and, then, exactly. and then we sort of have to somehow meaning remember oh no no there are women as well and they have well you just have to look at the infant the maternal mortality rate mm -hmm. in any given country mm -hmm. a, a, a procedure that's a straight like straightforward i mean a natural naturally occurring thing a vaginal birth or cesarean section women are still dying yeah. 
in something as natural as bringing children into the world. Now, that's, that's always, it's, it's always cast on the woman's health. Yeah. You know, the woman's yeah. this, yeah. Yeah. whatever. But I promise you, if men were giving birth, <laughs> we would have figured out another way to do it like ages ago. We no, just, yes. you know, it would take three years. Yeah, yes. It would be on the way for three years. But the yeah. other thing I also want to say is <laughs> that it's, up. it's yeah. also a lot to like put, like, because your, your question to was like, are black women doing enough? Um, to write to social change and that's also a lot to put on a group yes. of people mm -hmm. you know like Leslie Naker Arima who wrote um, what it means when a man falls from the sky um, she said at Open Book Fest this year that art is the highest form of self-expression mm -hmm. and you have these editors saying write about your Nigerian experience write about being a Nigerian woman mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's like you know what can we just write can, can we also just create and be artists and have fun and yes. play with language yes. For me personally, um, when I, because I do, uh, I edit a lot, I don't want my voice to be heard in your work because this was your creative process. And even when I was doing workshops here, I, I said, I, my job is not how to teach you how to write. You already know your story. You know how to tell it. My purpose here is to guide you how to, to tell your story well. I don't have to change effectively. Yeah. effectively. Mm. So, yeah, I get what you're saying with, with editing. I, I, I'm going through that. Mm. Yeah. Just a, a, a mm. sidebar. In Sesotho, there is no pronoun for men and women. The pronoun is exactly the same. Mm -hmm. So Sesotho yes. does not, in fact, most Sesotho languages do not differentiate, does not differentiate people based on gender. Mm -hmm. It's Munna U Matama. English will say he is going, yeah, she is going, pronouns. Mm -hmm. but Sesotho would say Musadi who? Oh, mm -hmm. They are, is it just there? Yeah, it's, no, well, it's you are going, but the you is not gender, or the I is not gender, or the he, he, so you could be as... So the language thing. itself, like, does not allows for, yeah. like, gendered freedom, yes. or what? Like, like, yeah, well, 100%. Yeah. So that's just a sidebar. I think perhaps let's engage the broader everyone. I know there are other poets here. Uh, I was DK France, I know. I know Prof is here. <laughs> yes, Abata is here. Questions, comments. Um, my interest, my personal interest is poetry, for example, that speaks to things like uh, the police movement, right? Because for me, and land, right? Um, I was reading Thomas Mufulo recently and he speaks a lot about land in his uh, Sesotho poetry and then you take the translated version of Chaka to English mm -hmm. and then you try to get the nuance of how he speaks about land and things like that, it's lost, it's, it's completely lost. Um, so I'm interested to know from perhaps somebody like you, perhaps like somebody like Aussie here, um, do, do you think that the slam, the poet, the what, what it was, soul, soulful clicks uh, brigade of poets. <laughs> Do you think they are also engaging in in this poetry as a force for social change as well, or is it we go there, we climb on a stage, you, you wanna feel what it feels like to be in front of people and so on and so on. Like, so I'm interested in specifically yours. Um, what, what do you think is the role of those people in poetry as a force for social change? Do you think that movement is contributing anything? Anyone, 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 anyone. Okay, yeah. Okay, yes, I think uh, uh, poetry also take, uh, plays part in, in those social uh, issues. Like, um, can I read you something? Yeah. I wrote something in Kosa. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. This is what this is what I said. When Zanzi Africa, Ngaba Inyani le, Ukuti ni file ni lachwele. Se ni lache awe nu amasiko. Ni libele into ya fe lo ngabo biko. Ngapa se vutelo ama China. Ba fika la ba ba pendu kama China. Se kutapa ge unjin dawo ama fake. Se so yika nuku ya kuwa ihek. Asi sakuwa zino salapanze. Abazali zbakali solo anze. Africa, Utenina, 
Sungibele na Unina, Kwakula wa Abantu Emaricana, Goku Sasimuliswa in Emariwana, Ubi Umsabakaise, Jangubas Nislekis and Goku Hambase, Abantana Betu Basenga Makangstas, Kujalo Izulu Alisana Mastas, Kuchamas Scrapers and Goktinas Zamugo, Mrs. Scraper, Sigia Loko Queta Flames are the Lung, and Dinas and the two them at the Kulung. You see, like, yeah. <laughs> Especially at the time that one would call time of profound change. One of the examples I have is what is regarded as the greatest protest poem of all time, Mask, no, Mask of Anarchy by Percy Bell Shelley. I have seen the leader of the Labour Party in England, Jeremy Corbyn, go into a music festival listen to my young people because largely he used he has used that poem the last lines that say ye are many they are few that reminds people of the power they have Stare, stares the crowd so much that largely on the basis of this poem he goes to the music festival they stop the performances. They listen to a politician, 68-year-old man, who uses poetry to speak against the things that are done by the Conservative Party, for instance, or the Conservative Party government in, in Britain. In South Africa, we have seen Uma Pele Madimali doing the same thing. Mzokembuli's poetry deserves Oh, 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 it's the kind of poetry that must land him in jail. Mm -hmm. However, what he did in the late 80s, early 90s, is an example of how poetry, at a time when we need, not only to be kind, yeah, mm -hmm. can 
become a catalyst yeah. to, to social movements. When you read it, it's like man is dead. Until Jessica performs it, yeah. renders the poem. Yeah. To understand is the land question between this, the trans guy and the trees. Right. It brings the message to life. Yeah. You begin to understand. I spent the whole year reading that book and I did, uh, I did far away, I did read 11 three times. The same book three times. Yeah. It meant nothing. Yeah. But one night in Jessica man, on the stage, brought yeah. the thing to life. Yeah. So you understand yeah. Yeah. So soulful poetry does that to you. Yeah. It appeals to your soul to begin to identify. Poetry does that. Yeah. Poetry yeah. is a deeply spiritual and personal yeah. thing. And, and I, I like the way poetry can move between the, the personal into the political very quickly. Uh -huh. yeah. Like so very quickly and without uh, too many borders. Mm -hmm. You know this idea of profound, profound change. Um, I'm not a phonist. I'm interested to know from any of the phonists, if there are phonists here, mm -hmm. uh, was there any big poetry performance kind of thing behind that or not? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure, yeah. Um, I think initially a lot of the work of conscientizing around, especially universities like UCT, um, centered around uh, poetry and certain art performances and actually stirred students to a better understanding of yeah of, of, exactly, of the country but I think later on uh, it became more of an admission to the space so there was uh, the formalities of gathering of organizing of speaking and then sort of you sort in the artistic aspect towards the event. but I, I just I think uh, in general, for me and my experience, uh, I find poetry and writing a form of self-parenting. Um, oh, you, <laughs> yeah, because I, like someone once told me that you know, I'm gonna go to a just now. Yeah. <laughs> someone once told me that writing is bleeding on paper. Yeah. Um, but I, I also argue that, and this is why I prompted a lot of activists to write through the neck news and um, that's why you see a lot of them writing because i said that you see yourself teething you see yourself growing and developing as a person and i look back at my old self and i'm like okay um i can see where not only i can improve as a writer but what i lacked as a person and then um I'll, as you said i'll go back to improve that, that process because yeah, I've, I've, I've also, because you mentioned in the very beginning, there are people who are in a rush to publish their work. Yes. And I'm in no rush yeah. to do yeah. that. Mm. And the more you try and help people, the more they don't understand they might just be reinventing, mm. yeah. you know, the wheel. And Bell Hoops uh, gives a sort of proviso that art is more than just telling it like it is. Yeah. Yeah. I met a 20 year old the other day and she's published a book. Um, it's lovely. But if she'd let it sit for a year, yeah, yeah, it yeah. would have been profound. Yeah, it's not yeah, profound. Yeah, yeah. You need to so, that I've published 10 books yeah. in, in, in a space of two years. Very prolific. And you're like, oh, wow, <laughs> 10 books in two years? Because also, what's the end goal then? Because yes. it feels like to me, it seems like a lot of people Conveyor are Bell. writing Bell, yeah. because they want publication, they want yeah. press. I mean, don't do this if you want press in South Africa. Yeah. You're not going to make money out of this. It's, even if you have an international agent and you get a film deal, you're still not going to make money out of it. You're still going to have a day job. Yeah. And the thing is, you need to love writing. And you need to love it so much that you're happy to do it by yourself and be lonely like that and be in processes yes. and return to that space all the time. Yeah. Do you think we give um, these old geezers enough credit? And should Which view are we talking about specifically? Matera. Uh, uh, well, he's like a grandfather to so many poets. Yes. Like myself included. No, no, what I mean is yeah. um, there was a, a murmur this week here that there was a performance of poems and it belonged to somebody else. This, uh, people, this person who wrote this work was not even acknowledged, right? What? 
Yeah. So so my point is this that do we I think do we do we do we go back enough and for whatever reason not that we should go and venerate at the feet of these guys. I think some of them were just terrible poets. They, I've read some stuff from the 60s. I'm like, there is no poem here. Like, <laughs> 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 no, yeah, no. And then they collected in that, you know, the like, yeah. penguin. <laughs> yeah. um, do you think, do we go back to that memory bank, that archive of, because we are, not, we, we, we are not doing anything new. Yeah. And, and this is what I find problematic with these younger poets is that they think they are the shit. They are the exactly. unique. Like they, well. you know, they know what but it's I like they're leaving you the first human being. Yes. It's exactly the same. Yeah. There's whole libraries of books, there's whole archives, bodies of yeah. work. Yeah. If you think you're the first of yours, you need to go and look at all the other bodies in there. Yeah. Yeah. But there's a lot of that. Right? So am I, yes, am yes. I alone in this? No, you're right. In, in my workshop, what I basically said to, to, to the participant is that writing is a sport. If you're playing soccer, if you don't exercise, if you don't go to the it's field, if you don't do research, then you're not doing the right thing, yeah. you know, because yeah. this is your sport. You must practice. You must be in the field at least five times yeah. a week, yeah. you know. So you can't just claim to be a writer if you've never read, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah. because writing is it's a form of emulation. You read, read, you read a thousand times and then you write. Yeah. 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 Because if you think... Most of the time, especially in poetry, first time authors, 50% claim to write into poetry, you know? And uh, when I run workshops, this is my first question, what are you reading? Yeah. And then yeah. if a person tells me he's reading Miles Monroe and he's writing poetry, you are reading in the wrong spot. You, because you should be reading in what you are writing into so that you can get you, you have to know even the style the technique that i'm employing this technique in terms of writing i'm trying to emulate this person but i'm speaking into you know so yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you should be reading more than you're writing no, exactly but no, that, 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 it's, no but a lot of people don't, don't know no, that they don't mm -hmm. know. Yeah. They, and they don't want to do and it's it also the thing this sport metaphor is so good because you can be an amateur you can play soccer because you love it mm -hmm. and you can write because you love it you can write as something that you do on the weekends and just to like like diary mm -hmm. but if you want to be a professional if this is going to be your Practice. life and you want to call yourself a writer it like it takes so much sacrifice social hours money family time Oh yeah, now yeah. My, my confusion comes between uh, praise poetry and poetry. I'm, I always between what and what else? Praise poetry. Right, right, right. right. Poetry. Because right. I'll always find myself sitting there and asking myself, how is this person supposed to be sounding? And why is it always supposed to be said? Where's the love in this poetry? Right, right, why right. all this melodrama, dramatic verses and yeah. How are we supposed to feel? How are we supposed to receive all of this? So maybe if the house can explain to us how poetry is supposed to sound, and how 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 praise poetry is supposed to sound this way. Yeah. Ma 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 good. Oh, I'm sorry. Can I talk for a moment? Yeah. 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 I can talk for a moment. I can say this for you. I bring my children to the English school. This is my oldest daughter. I got a sample of her head to worry the most. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But I speak a lot with people. I can't even say anything about what I've written. I've written a lot with my daughter. Yeah. 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 You're just a bottle. Who are you? You're so powerful. You're making me powerful. I'm strong. You make me belong. Because you're my friend. But you are just a bottle. You let me talk. You make me believe you're a true friend. You give me words. You sometimes twist my words. When in me, I have inner peace. You split me into two. Make things easier. Wish it was not true. I drink you and become Superman. Then again, 
I drink you and I am no man. Mm. You are just a bottle. <laughs> I won't let you ruin me. I won't let you abuse me no more. I will refuse you. I won't let you hurt me no more. My life I will restore. You befriend you befriend me, but befriend Ahwen. You befriend me, but I'll make an enemy of you. I'm under your influence. I am controlled by you. You are now me. You are just a bottle. Sometimes you even making a spectacle of me. Now I realize, though that you thought true, I'll truly make an enemy of you. No alcohol for me no more. No nice times for me no more. No drunkness. I will stood for no more. Cause you no know, friend, you won't cause my end. I will control you and not you me. You just a bottle. Uh, this I wrote because you know sometimes now, um, a poem explained is a poem killed. Thank you. <laughs> Once explain it, we get it. Thank you wrote very well. You just so we it. get it. Yeah, I'm not sure. Take it for cool. I will explain on the same and that of cool. Okay. Okay. I got it described. Um that I the dinner created someone so it's in my nas na and me the dinner created me so it's that's our ex fool it will let explain. Maar ik zeg dat je er niet mee doet. Ik wil de woorden als genoeg laat je ermee moeten. Wat is dat, mijn broer? Ik denk dat het is captured. Ik denk dat de 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 poetry clubs, poetry sessions, right? Quite cool, quite trendy. New things that some of us didn't do in the in the 90s. And I'm sure some stuff that other people do they didn't do in the 80s and so on and so on and so on. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you think the poetry sessions and those kinds of movements and writers in those poetry sessions, their voices, how legitimate are they as, as a way of one, personal and self-expression, two, um, either sensitizing society uh, contributing towards this social change. Do you think these these poetry things? I, I'm slightly older now. I always say, eh, should I go? Like it's an open mind. It's like eh, I'm not too sure. Do you think that these sessions in general? Do you think they contribute uh, towards social change and how? Uh, and the genuine genuinity of of these voices and genuine to who? Right? So, I mean, if, if we say <coughs> questioning the genuine nature of your voice, who am I to do that, right? Who prescribes what is genuine and, and so on and so on. So, as, do you think the younger generation that is now in this poetry movement, do you think they are contributing to that force of social change and how? Okay. So, um, my experience from two nights back said to me, I think we have lost the plot especially the young generation in terms of poetry because when I remember when we started these poetry sessions uh, about 2004 which was 14 years back yeah. um, there was a zeal I started in 95 <laughs> so, yeah. sure. I was born in <laughs> so, <laughs> so one <laughs> so one self expression has lost its purpose amongst the youth today yeah. but it can also be based on the issues of the trends that are happening on social media and television and all these influences but me being from the old school maybe of your remember the the shutter uh, publication yeah. that used to happen in the yeah. old days yeah. Yeah. yeah it was for me when I encountered that book the first time in my dad's library it was a point of saying wow yeah I'm learning one about things that I've lost or that I wasn't part of the revolution one yeah. and how literature actually especially poetry counted the revolution then and then I was inspired to say that I'm gonna drop off number one I dropped out of IT I dropped out of a number of academic programs you know I decided no I want to do literature promotion one for self-expression one to give the young kid the voice that they need, but that voice needs to rub off to me and you yeah. to say that why should I go to a poetry session? Yeah. It's either to be inspired mm -hmm. or for me to say that I'm 
it's an alternative entertainment for me. Yeah. You know? But then on the point of social change, coming back to the la two nights back, if a young writer speaks about sexual intercourse that are not even aligned with the laws or statutes of poetry, then we have a problem because you can't contextualize his expression to that. Is that not uh, me prescribing what you should say? <coughs> no? I'm it, just asking. I'm, I'm in the case of that poet, are you talking about? Yeah, no, in the case of that particular poet. Yeah. In a way, it is, it, it is in a way. But remember, there was a small, there was a young kid, yeah. about 15, and a younger one than 15, amongst the audience. So there needs to be some yeah. thought of sense into what do I deliver for who. Yeah. But as well, me interpreting the poem, where is it taking me to? Yeah. Is it really speaking on the social issues that are there? Yeah. If I need to align it to that. So it needs that, yeah. you know. Some but, sort of balance, mm. yeah. So the authors today, they need to read it so that they understand yeah. why are they also writing. Because I think I learn from what I've read. Yeah. I mean, for instance, we're having a work with Hons them and not for them and label them. It says that, for instance, labels poetry gives me a sense of she's a woman and she's trying to stand up for women's issues through her poetry. Hons's poetry as well, Nosiko's poetry as well. And all of those, these authors that I've mentioned now, if you look at them, they have impacted on social change yeah. on a number of young people that I know. Yeah. I want to go back to the soccer metaphor. Yeah. I think we've. I, I've sort of seen this week and at a few like recent festivals I've gone to that people think like there's there's people here who are writing professionally, right? Yeah. So if you're playing soccer as an amateur, you're not going to interrupt the space of a famous professional soccer player if it hasn't been. You know, there's, there's, there's conventions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think these conventions are, are not being respected, um, especially in, in terms of earning that space. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. a lot of people, yeah. Yeah. you know, like poetry and, and writing and literature, it, it's art. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, and I think we need to, I, I feel like it's being denigrated a little. Yes. Um, it's a very high form of, of, of expression. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's not just about, emotions on a page. Mm. There, there is skill involved. That is why people do four-year and three-year MFAs. This is why people do PhDs. Not because it's it's um, to be fancy or to be academic, but because there is a wealth of knowledge and there's a wealth, there's so much you can learn and understand about it. Yeah. And I, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm just finding I'm getting more and more frustrated with young poets who, who, who are calling themselves writers and poets but they're not willing to do anything to mm -hmm. advance mm -hmm. themselves and they don't consider it an art form because they just think mm -hmm. any second person can do it yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. not every second person's a michelangelo and that's yeah. okay yeah. yes yeah. 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 no I, I i i really agree with you in that sense because you ask a person who's, who says you know i'm a poet i write poetry who's your favorite poet you know, and you know, the answer that you get is just quite something else. If every single, Tia Botemok always says, if every single person who calls himself a poet in South Africa mm. bought one poetry collection a year, poets would, would be able to eat. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 You know, you go to these publishing houses, you want to submit your manuscript, and unfortunately, we don't take manuscripts of poetry because mm. poetry doesn't sell. Because and it's a norm. It. People aren't buying it because we have so many, you know, has a shop uh, poets and, and you know and what perhaps not. just to interject on that i think as well today poetry has been seen by young especially young poets mm -hmm. as the leeway to 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 self-claim yourself as a writer that's one and as a poet mm -hmm. but for the fact that i spend like for one poem i'll tell you it can take me a year yeah. before i could actually we feel comfortable to it say this. Call it a poem. Yes, you know. You know. Call it a poem. I don't yeah. think most poets talk this is shit. This is mm. shit, yeah. and you hate and yourself. Yeah. And it's. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Can we talk about performance poetry for a little bit? No, no, no. Before that, before that. Um. Um. So you're you're freezing me. <laughs> yeah, no, no. no I'm, 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 I'm using my powers as the chair. Can I suppress you? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Can you protect me from this? Please protect me from yourself. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> protect me from yourself. Um, I wanted to say, um, 
and it's gone and something that I say in my book. Um, oh yeah, that each and every generation of artists engage with art for its own purpose or for its own generational, I don't want to say issues because it, it feels like these issues change over time and often they don't, right? Um, but each and every generation of artists, whether it's musicians, poets, uh, fine artists, they engage with art differently to their previous generation yes. or to generations more previous than mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you think that um, poets right now are engaging, one, have we identified what our issues are? Mm -hmm. And we are engaging them with the vigor, with the force of the previous generations, and and for whatever purpose or for whatever benefit, right? Um, because I feel like in the past it was so simple. It was like we are fighting apartheid. Yeah. Full stop, yeah. right? So yes. that that's it. You just write a protest poem. Yeah. Chances are no, we are not even going to fine tune it. It's it's anti apartheid. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. You have Uraka Mahua. It's fine. Yeah. Mm. But now we've got so many other challenges that um, it's either poets are unable to locate their battles, mm -hmm. or we refuse to do that, or we are engaging with this art of poetry for, I suppose, masturbatory reasons, for mm -hmm. self pleasure, for, yeah. oh yeah, I'm a I poet you and like I, I, you know, I, I'm <laughs> reading, I'm, I'm the lead poet and I don't do open mics and nonsense like that. Do you think that the poets have chosen? these battles and we are engaging with that effectively, should we do that? Uh, you know, like, I, I don't know what is, what should be the next step? How, how do we make sure that poet, poetry actually achieves something? The message is, something? you know, it, 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 so. I, I was telling the, the, the group of uh, students, I said to them, you know, uh, what is the name I mean, he, he, he writes beautifully. We know this also, and he can perform if he wants. But also but, very difficult. Yes, yeah. also very difficult. Yeah. But what I also like about Lesef, when Lesef will get to a venue, take his book, it's like, guys, I am a literary person. I know how to read my work. Mm. I'm not coming here to perform my work. So it's, it's I'm, I'm, I'm finding with all of the young participants now, you know, they want to talk about the moon that is orbiting the axis, yeah. you know, the chakras, <laughs> the third, you know, Which all of that, pit. you know, <laughs> and mention all of that. I'm like, hi, guy, this is not a, it's not a philosophical class. Yeah. Speak poetry, you know. Yeah. Show me, don't tell me stuff. For some people, that are, you know, orbiting, orbiting and all of that, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I was saying to them that, you know, even reading your work, it's, some, it's something simple, but it's beautiful. We are not all performers. Yeah. We are not going to be all bo mute mute TV yeah. or bo lebo machile, you yeah. know, because lebo machile, she's unique, yeah. you know. Yeah. You are unique to voice, unique. We went to, yesterday we went to and bought out, um, uh, <laughs> who are reading for, for, for old people, you know, when Nosifo came, because she connected more with, with the elders because she was speaking their language, you know, so speak into your audience, find your audience and write for it, don't be someone else, be you. So the point of where are we as young artists today? Or young artists say, what are we writing for or not writing for? One, I I always saw poetry as the watchman of the city. Like, let's put it across all artists. We are all watchmen of the city. We are here to conscientize, to say that, comrade, seems like you're losing your point. That's, I think, where it also comes to being a place poet. Yeah. It's yes, not that you, are, yes. you always have to please praise, yes, and yes, praise these yes. people. Even in the case that, say, Jose Pino comes and he's here. But we know that Jose Pino actually is bullshitting us as a leader. <laughs> it means that we have to actually be doing that and yeah. exposing and, him. And um, to answer that or to, to, to sort of step in, I'm sorry about that. I find that at least in Sesotho, Sesotho allows you, the language, the utility of language, allows you to actually 
tell Hosipe no Maseba nonsense. Oh. Exactly. Respectfully, Marakuri, you can actually put him in his place. You know, there are so many um, facets and elements of language that you can use that, that can drive a very strong message, message forward without. Uh, but gen- no, 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 not gen- yeah, in a dignified manner, I suppose. Yes. Yeah, with respect, yeah. right? And it allows you to, so, sorry, it allows you to to be uh, what you said uh, about hearing as well, yeah. about being the ear of society, not just the mouth, the mouth. Sorry, I'll tell you Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, Can I just raise a point, please? I feel we're not we're not writing in different styles, right? Eh? We should not undermine each other's work. That's the thing. I may have I have my own style of writing. I can also tell you are writing sorry to say this word shit for me. You say okay. I need to interject no, uh, in a way. Yes. Because it was no, it was it was a hanging it was a point that hanging yes. that I needed to also put across. Is that being criticized or being highlighted to say that this is how we view your work. It doesn't specifically say that we are undermining your work, but we're just saying that uh, um, you need to tweak it a bit so that what we think you wanted to say can be said in a certain form yeah. or in a certain so way. There's a reason that mm. editors exist. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. If, if, you, if you think yes. editors must exist, then okay, mm. go tell every editor in the world that their job is meaningful. Yeah. Yeah. Go, go for it. Yeah. Okay, I, I'm thinking, eh, when it comes to uh, art, I still believe that we see things beyond things. So sometimes a person will come to you and tell you that you're writing shit. You must ask yourself whether you are reaping or you are sowing from what that person has said and you have to also look beyond what the person has said and ask yourself if it is about you or about the person that, that that's talking so every time when you learn you you always you have to learn to listen to what the person is saying yeah. and we mustn't and we we speak yes as, as artists now we speak from our heart we say things that 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 are long spoken from our heart when we articulate them Ne? But then you have to sit down and ask yourself, okay, this person is saying I'm writing shit. Okay, let me do something with the shit. Let me make manure with this shit. Mm-hmm. You, you see? So it's always a case of positivity. Yeah. 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 When when you when you're an artist, you don't you don't look at things with the with the with the with the concept of just physically looking, the uh, physical aspect of looking at things. That's what I'm saying. And to answer the uh, question, to answer your question, I know where it's been a few minutes back. Yes. Ne? Sometimes uh, people uh, people write write about emotions because I think poetry, especially poetry, ne? you write from your heart. It's something that that you see and then you 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 sort of tell it the way you see it, how you feel. Because in the first place, I think for me, poetry is about something that that's inside you that you can't say with your words. That you have to pen it down straight from your heart. Yeah. That is why mostly it's about emotions. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, just to maybe go back mm-hmm. to the point that you made, that was maybe <laughs> uh, a point of contention there. Um, I think, you know, again, writing on the moon, the stars and all of that, yeah, for me, from a, what I call a spiritually evolutionary mm-hmm. perspective, mm-hmm. will come out more no, 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 no. She made a general point. I'm just saying it could have been misconstrued or misunderstood. Right? Um, so, I mean, you'll find that more than perhaps the time of a, a Christian Pan Africanist Robert Sobuki, right? Coming, com, coming out now, right? But uh, again, also the issue of a cliche. Um, what, what, what is really a cliche for, you know, someone writing about the ocean and the sand and all of that? But to say a 60-year-old black woman who's never gone to the ocean before, that is a new experience. So she to me that is a uh, experience to, you know, to them. So I just wanted to maybe uh, come in on the issue On the issue of writing from the heart, I agree we write from the heart. And usually we are compelled to write at a certain point what you want to write. But it doesn't mean that you can't revisit it. So that, because of, at, at a certain point, you were 
driven by emotions. Mm -hmm. So these emotions were just pushing you. Yes. You know, you're mm -hmm. pushing that child they out. You are born, but now you need to mold the child. Mm -hmm. So it means that perhaps mm -hmm. the few lies that you had needed to be reconstructed. So it means that you need to wake up to that yeah. and look at it and say that, but my child, you need to change your behavior in this way yeah. so that you become a better character. Well, it's and, like and you can't give birth and that baby's not going to walk out into the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and a six year old is not. Drafts. Drops. People read hundreds of drafts and, of the and same And it's also time. about publishing because yeah. as a publisher, Kale, yeah. what do you choose to publish? Yeah. You, yeah. Publish, you, you publish I mean, it's a business. Yeah. You have yeah. to publish something that will sell. Yeah. Yeah. I get yeah. it. Yeah. So, yeah. Utotia yeah. roses are red, violets are blue. Yeah. 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 You know? Yeah. So, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> perhaps, perhaps, as my second last point, um, what do you think is the role of social? So, I'm, I'm asking the three of you, as opposed to the floor, even. What is the role of social media in helping? these voices out, these poetic voices that drive whatever kind of social change uh, that you are writing for as a, as a poet or whether you are writing as a movement of poets or whatever the case is. What do you think is the, uh, the benefits, the benefits, the disadvantages yeah. and, and um, how can we use it better? So, I mean, you have the Insta Poet Generation, yeah. which is a bunch of people writing poems, uploading it to Instagram. Yeah. Very, like, simple. Yeah. And I think what's lovely is it's democratic. Yeah. Most people have access to data, Wi-Fi, and social media. Um, it means it spreads very quickly. Uh, but I think in that democratization, uh, that yeah. making it a democratic, yeah. yes, yeah. that, and that economization of it, I think we sort of lose sight of the fact that being a poet or being a writer was it, it's a calling mm. um, and it's it's a calling that also comes with the specific uh, duties mm. and responsibilities yeah. and that means that when you write something I, I mean why why put something out there if you're just doing it for likes or if you just want everyone to clap and like whatever it needs to be it needs to have meaning and purpose and purpose yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and whether um, that purpose is personal, it's yes. community, So I think the advantages yeah. are that poetry is all of a sudden incredibly accessible to people, which is wonderful. Rupi Kaur has got people reading. Mm. She sold a million copies of her book. I mean, that's ridiculous. Yeah. Before her, we'd never heard of that. Yeah. Um, but at the same time... Koleka. Koleka, no, but, yeah. but her poetry is better. I, I don't even want to draw comparisons between okay. her. You know, Koleka is actually a poet. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 But I mean, because of... Um, with global trends in, po in publishing poetry and that Ruby Carr has made it possible for uh, local poets like Koleka to go into an eighth print run. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And even me, who's in a completely like separate arena to Koleka, we've published by the same poet, um, publisher, yeah. and I've just gone into my second print in four months. Oh yeah? Wow. But that, that would never have happened four years ago. Yeah. Or even two, and probably not last year. Yeah. So each person's success making it possible for the next person to sell people are reading it. Yeah. But at the same time, let's not lose Sites. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an art form. Yeah. So yeah, social media. Social media has got an disadvantage, you know, plagiarism for one. Yeah. Because uh, I cut and paste. <laughs> 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 because I feel I'm a poet, but I don't have. I have a writer's block. Yeah. So for this piece is there. Yeah. So I feel like, you see, these four lines are appealing to me. Yeah. I'm gonna use. I'm gonna take them and not recognize the poet yeah. Yeah. or the writer for that mere fact. Yeah. So that is one, but. Once a friend of mine said, Will you have been struggling to publish your poems? But I see you on Facebook and you've got already a few notes that you have put up of your own poems. You know, I was like, Yeah, so I'm publishing. You know? So I believe that as well. <coughs> the more the views and likes, maybe a publisher will buy into my idea and follow you. But at the same time, social media has got a power to say that you can bring the social change that we can't in the past. Let me say, a part of the era of yeah. bringing communities together. Say, yeah, there's yeah. a meeting today. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna come, yeah. you know. Yeah. But so it can actually advance the social change. Whatever, whatever you choose it to be. Sure. Uh, do you want to speak to social media? Yes. Um, so social media plays a role in We are coming for you. <laughs> we are going to find you. Yeah. So as much as are you have fears that uh, your work is going to be stolen, the readers know. Yeah. They know your voice. Yeah. They know your writing style. They know your themes and your topics. 
So we're, we're here for you. We like will Twitter. Them, we will call them out. Oh, like Twitter. Right. Yes. <laughs> intellectual property yeah. and it's illegal. It's yeah. theft. Yeah. Yeah. Any, so, anyone else? Anything about social media? Because yes. I think I, I think one of the things that uh, perhaps the older generation didn't have or older generations didn't have is, is that speed, that ability to speak to a lot of people at a time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, from anywhere in the world and engage. Um, and also the idea of likes. I wish there was there was a button that would say yeah, yeah, no, yeah. No, no, not that dislike. No, not that dislike so much. No, not that dislike so much, but something that and I think this is an attitude about poets that half of us don't like to be criticized. We don't like to be um, um, mentored and and no, this is what I say that you know, with editing, if you write, yes, and you make it once you edit it, how can a line change and then he misses, and then he has to take two steps because he's going back, he meets his brain. So how are you going to get to the time that you keep on missing and you stop into person? You have to take a step back. And I think most of the time, I mean, I, I myself love being edited, I love doing more, I love this criticism mm -hmm. and being mentored. I think it's an incredible first step. Some of the parents of you are mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. I will provide you some of my emails <laughs> where I have, I have given all my digital law and mental yeah. on their writing. And it's a platform. It's like, don't do it. Like, don't touch my boys. Like, don't. <laughs> Don't they're finished. They, I'm done. They are. Actually, you know what? I just had my first editing gig. Right? The short stories by the uh, Sydney Story Foundation. Mm -hmm. And I can't tell you how many short story writers were getting edited that I was editing. Yeah. Because I thought that was finished. Yeah. Yes. So, so. Okay, I saw, I saw. Yes. Yeah. And, and a lot of younger poets actually do that a lot. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's because mm -hmm. I'm younger. Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. I'm younger. Yeah. But if you are mm -hmm. sending your stuff, mm -hmm. if you are sending your stuff to mm -hmm. me, and Pembrun is interested in that way. They will do stuff. Either take it or you okay. right? can yeah. not speak yeah. yeah. it. But I feel like people think there is. Editing is not, it's, it's a negotiating process. It is. But, but it's but, not negotiable. It's going yes, to happen. It's not yeah. negotiable. It is going yeah. to happen. Uh, how far we go with that, that's another discussion altogether, but it has to happen. But I think uh, we have to go. Yeah, we finish the Okay. okay. Yeah. I feel as well it's about emotional intelligence. Yeah. So if you're an artist, you must be ready for whatever comes. Yeah. And your emotions have to. You can invest emotions if you're an artist. Oh, oh, oh. Can, I, can, can I make you a perfect example of emotional intelligence? Is this chap that uh, paints President Zumanike? Uh. I think that guy is extremely strong. <laughs> like the amount of negative criticism that he gets. And he just takes it. Mm -hmm. Not that I like his art, but I mean he has the freedom to do that. And so you are right about mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it. It's, it's, it's really something that that, that that we should all be aware of. But also, if you want to be a professional writer, it's in the job description. Yeah. It's just not something you want to do. Yeah. Okay, I think we are at. The, oh yeah, no, no. Please, yes. Yeah, yes, I yes, think yes. again, you know, going back to the power of social media. Um, there was one post I wrote about the colored question of, you know, in the Western Cape. Yeah. Uh, it raised the eye of a few people, but um, with regards to finding an audience, you can also create one. Yes. And that happened with a guy who actually was attacking some of my views. And the more patient I was with him, the more I shared with him, he actually came over and we became friends. Yeah. We started going to campuses together. Yeah understand what I'm saying and uh, there were people who even were like okay dude I'm from the states but I'm saying you didn't tell us three and four because I like what you are you are producing but something that like worries me about my we call it age bracket is the other day some of us were selling like second hand books and the, like, the amount of I counted about five or six young people that like boldly told me unashamedly that um, yeah, they yeah. say I don't, no, I don't like the these things. Um, nice. I, I want to just finish my diploma or whatever. So I'm reading coursework and whatever you are presenting is fun. 
activities outside of extra you know curricular activities and then uh, they see something uh, politically oriented and then they relegate it to simply historical and then whatever is historical is a set of facts yeah. so um, I'm trying I, I, I'm worried yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm worried any last words for me I would say before you can even start to finalize, to say that your product is nice, allow it to first summon. One, let it summon. And then find somebody who you're comfortable to get to no, 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 and tell you that. whatever they feel about the call. Yeah. And take it back home. Yeah. And yeah. Polish, polish it. Yeah. And then go back again <laughs> and say, let me perhaps what I must from your expectations at the end, because I think, right as you have said, we all don't think of money when we start writing. I think all of us here, that is not the point. But mm -hmm. the moment it gets for consumer, so it means that okay. it needs to be checked. Yes. And if remember, somebody is investing their money in sure. your product. Sure. Therefore, you have to respect them by way of. You know, the end value is not going to produce a shit product. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 It's not going to get sold. Yeah. So you've got to. Okay, I, I think, think I, I think yeah. you must also are you all your comments. You're thinking as poor as alone, but there's also the audience. What do you think? Yes, mm -hmm. correct. Yeah, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. perhaps you need to get our views as an mm -hmm. audience who are not poor. Yes. Like some of us would, would be happy to just be in preschool level, mm -hmm. listen to schools mm -hmm. and listen to them alone in entertainment. So yeah. some see poetry as, as entertainment, yeah. some see a mix of poetry and music yeah. as mm -hmm. a way of entertainment mm -hmm. for us, that has good for us. So I'm also saying that balance the views yes. and that you are in different leagues. There, there will be some who are starters, some will be the some level, some will be professional. And all of you have a space. And it doesn't mean that you should uh, suppress that, as I'm saying. And those at preschool must learn from those at upper leagues. There's nothing wrong with it. Yeah, but I'm saying create spaces because there's also your views and the views of those who consume exactly. your views. And that's very important. So, exactly. Okay, on Mukai, you are the last one. Yes, um, I think that um, the, the topic of poetry as a force for social change is a very interesting one because one is that not everybody will say their poetry is a force for social change. However, and, that's fine. and that is fine. Yeah. But at the same time, poetry that is irrelevant to social issues is basically irrelevant to the reader or to the one who consumes it. <laughs> and the idea or the phenomenon of an activist poet or poet activist has always been there. And I don't think it, it should be wrong or shameful for one to say my poetry is centered on feminism. My poetry is centered on race identity or something. So I think um, we need to to be aware that just like Omotosho spoke of writer, politician, politician, writers, mm. the, the phenomenon of the activist poet has always been there, yes. will be there. In fact, it is a very, very strong one in in time of profound change. And I, I suppose for me in closing, it's um, the idea of force for social change is, is an elephant. And the best way to eat an elephant is to carve it out piece by piece. Mm -hmm. So all of us as ants eating this elephant, we are coming with our little pincers and scissors and we are, we are eating this elephant whole, but uh, all at the same time and together. And None of us is a better end than the other, right? Um, and you might be writing your about stars and fat eyes and cosmic <laughs> stuff. That's fine. Mm -hmm. No one says, no one says that poetry has to be political. Mm -hmm. and I think that yeah. is, is 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 right when he says, um, you know, if you are writing about feminism or beauty or this or this, that is fine. Not all poetry is going to be a force of social change, and I, I suppose. I'm the last person to prescribe such a thing that your poem has to do this, right? It has to make me feel this. Um, yeah, and to those who misunderstood anything that I said, 
I apologize um, and to those that we sort of misunderstood um, I'm sorry that I misunderstood you and I'm sorry that as a panel we misunderstood you um, but yeah thanks for coming uh, thanks that guy for putting this uh, lovely panel together and it was awesome to host it and yeah thank you very much thanks for coming oh, guys. Nice.